Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about uh, social anxiety, how to deal with, uh, in particular, approach anxiety for a lot of different situations. So approach anxiety comes up um, anytime you're approaching, generally, um, environments you're not used to. So you literally could be feeling this about a physical place, you know, that you're you're wary about. You still could feel that that anxiousness. Um, but uh, in particular, we're going to talk about um, the social anxiety of just approaching new groups and new people. So whether that's making new friends at school or new friends at church or new friends at uh, some, you know, new sport you just joined or whatever, or you're meeting uh, your boyfriend or girlfriend's family for the first time, right? These are all times you're going to feel socially anxious. You're also going to feel socially anxious you know, doing door-to-door -door sales, um, making, uh, you know, doing cold calling, you know, for various companies. Uh, you can feel socially anxious, you know, calling your, your phone bill company to ask a few questions, you know, especially if it's something you've never done before. Um, you can feel socially anxious, uh, you know, when you're trying to talk to a girl that you find attractive, right? So there's tons of situations where you're going to find yourself socially anxious, and we're just going to quickly talk about uh, how to deal with those. So the first thing is, is find your comfort zone. So I have about eight steps here that if you follow will help you uh, greatly in um, oh, dealing with this problem, which everyone has, by the way. It doesn't even matter how experienced you get. You will always have this, have these things. And, and that's uh, basically because a large, large part of the, the social anxiety comes from our genetics. Our, our brain is socially wired is just, sorry, is genetically wired to be wary of social situations, right? It's uh, it became in our uh, advantage as a species to succeed in social situations. Like if you're talking to a, a random person, it's really important how that conversation went, uh, especially in the past. And our brain is uh, wired to to uh, to deal with that. Um, basically, the reason is because in the past we lived in smaller communities. This is like distant human society, right? We lived in like societies of 100 and 200 people. And when you live in those small societies, what ends up happening is that uh, if you if you make a fool of yourself, right? Let's say you go hit on the chief's daughter and you fail miserably. Um, in those small societies, everybody knows everybody, so you. You're, uh, like, every single person knows about your mistake, and your social status goes um, down, right? You lose, you know, some respect and some friends, and you become, like, the laughing stock of the village for a little while, right? So there's a lot on the line, and uh, so being careful in these situations made a lot of sense, right? To your survival, to your reproductive survival, to your overall well-being, it made a lot of sense. Um... And that's why in our brains, our brains are wired to uh, be cautious in these situations, in these contexts. So I just want to get that out of the way. Everyone feels social anxiety. Men, women, whatever, right? Every single person feels it, has to deal with it, especially when entering um, new environments that they're not comfortable with, right? Some people are afraid of public speaking. Fundamentally, it comes from this place. Um, so let's, uh, let's just deal with eight strategies to, uh, to deal with these. The first strategy is you should take baby steps to slowly build up your, uh, to, to, to break down the places where you feel socially, uh, insecure. Okay. So let's say you talk to a lot of people a lot. You talk to strangers a lot, but you have trouble talking to girls or getting a girl's number, or you have trouble, uh, let's say, with public speaking, right? So you can talk to strangers just fine. You just have trouble with public speaking. So what you should do is try to find baby steps to get there. So trouble with public speaking might be talking to yourself in a mirror, talking to yourself like I kind of am right now on YouTube with your, with your computer, right? You just have these conversations, um, giving the speech in front of a, a friend, right, one-on-one, -on -one. and in front of, like, two friends, right, rehearsing it over and over and over, so it becomes memorization, so when you're up on stage, you're no longer thinking, you're just going, 
right? You're just staring off into like this invisible crowd and you're just going with the words because you've just rehearsed it a billion times. So you just do all of these little strategies to do that. So baby steps tell success. If you have trouble just talking to random people, right? You have trouble making friends or talking to a random stranger or whatever, right? Uh, you can just, you know, walk around. Uh, let's say you go to a park or to a mall. And it's as you walk by people say, hello, hi, how's it going? And you'll notice as you get better and better and better at this, your social anxiety with it will go down, right? Um, and if that's too advanced for you, um, you can imagine you're talking to somebody, you know, say hello to yourself. Hi, how's it going? Right? And rehearse it. And so just like when you go into the real world and say it, you're saying it from the rehearsed position. Hi, how's it going? Right? It may come off awkward. It may come off strange. And let me tell you something. It probably will. But that's not the point. The point is you're developing a skill. Right? And then you always keep taking it to the next level. So after you say, hey, how are you? You want to be like able to say, uh, like I just said, hey, how are you? You want to ask a question and get a response. So that would be like the next step. Uh, the next step after that might be like, hey, how are you? Like, hey, I'm great. Like, oh, it's cool. Um, like, hey, can you stop for a second? I had a quick question for you. Um, like, oh, yeah, what is it? And then make sure you stop, right? If, and this is going to get on later on. But your body language needs to reflect where you're communicating. If you say, hey, you have a quick second and you just keep walking, they're probably just going to keep walking, right? You're not, you're not giving them any social pressure to stay there. You're saying, hey, you know, if I just keep walking, you're just going to keep walking. That's, that's all that's going to happen. Right? If you say, like, hey, and look away, it shows them you're not interested in the answer. It doesn't matter if they reply. You know, and uh, in our society, we have a very much uh, automated, hey, good morning, right, good morning, right? Like, it's very zoned out, no meaning, just, like, fluff talk. So if you're actually looking for a conversation, you need to make sure your body language lines up with what you're saying. And I'm going to get into that more later. But baby steps. Find your comfort zone and slowly build. Right. Uh, another way to do this is if you're not feeling able, like let's say you're talking to yourself, you're rehearsing it, and then you, you still kind of are coming up short of what you want, is before you go out and do what you want to do, is I would socially saturate myself. And I've done this before, by the way. These aren't just like made up tips just off the top of my head. These are things that I've literally done and have uh, increased my own personal success, right? So I felt socially anxious um, in, in like, talking to girls I found attractive. I just, it was hard for me to do. Like, I mean, I could talk to them, but it's hard for me to get to the, almost like the, hey, can I get your number stage, right? Those just felt weird and awkward to me. You know what I mean? I, I don't know why. It just did. So and I'm sure a lot of people share that exact same thing. In fact, I know people do. So, the, so I did these things. I did these baby steps. I did go to Park and I'd say hello and hi, and I, and I did eventually start asking questions. And eventually, I got to a point where I projected a good body language that people would respond to me. I'd say hello, and three people riding their bike would turn to me and say hello back, like all three of them. I would say hi to a person. They would take out their earbuds, their music, and they'll say, oh, hey, hi, and then I'll put it back in, right? And it was because I was able to project a confident and uh, secure body language and make it seem I expected a response, and what I was doing was uh, was normal. And it's weird that it's just a game, but it's just, it's, on some level, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's developing a skill set that you can use. So how do you become socially saturated? This is tip number two. Become socially saturated before going out. You could talk to friends and family. So just have a conversation with your sister, your brother, your dad, your best friend, whatever. Have those conversations. Have a 10, 12-minute conversation. And then go out and talk to another person. And it becomes a lot easier if you just got done talking to talk to someone else. Um, and just keep taking it to the next level. So for one part of the level, you could be uh, talking to friends and family. The next time you could talk to an old guy, you know, sitting down on a bench, you know, at a park or a mall or whatever. And you say, hey, how's it going? They reply. And... Uh, Nine times out of ten, especially if you're talking to an older person, like you do not, uh, you do not have to do too much. You, hey, do you mind if I sit with you? They'll probably say, yeah, sit down, and they'll probably talk to you. 
I mean, old people have a lot of time and generally and a lot of life to talk about. Okay, they have a lot of stuff on their minds and a lot of free time, right? And they can literally go on for hours and hours without you prodding or instigating any sort of uh, conversation to carry, right? Um, so they're a great way to warm up, like, on a stranger to get in the mood of, uh, of talking, right? You could, uh, you could use chat roulette. You could just type to people on Facebook, especially if you type to someone you don't normally talk to on Facebook, right? You can just say whatever. Um, so, uh, another thing we do is try to get one of your best friends or a friend to, to do something they normally wouldn't do, you know, like, um, see if they'll do a short film with you, right? Like, let's say you're, you know, you're not even into short films, whatever, but let's just see if they'll, they'd be interested in making one with them, with you and try to convince them. You know, you don't have to have an idea planned out. You just be like, hey, let's make a short film. Like, what about, like, I don't know. I just want to make one. You know, I don't think it'd be cool. And they're like, ah, whatever. You know, just, just try to convince them. And just have that conversation, right? And just to, to socially warm yourself up. Another part of social saturation is to watch videos. So this is kind of like the intellectual side of uh, prepping yourself to go out. Like, would be like watching a video like this. But there's also another type of video you can watch, is which, is, which is just people doing exactly what you want them to see, what you want to see, whether it's people picking up girls or people selling door to door, or uh, you know whatever interaction you're looking for, um, you can just look that up. But I'm going to list some uh, really good ones that I, I found uh, valuable. Um, I would watch uh, a lot of like prank videos, you know, like the zombie prank and the clown prank. I don't know if you've seen those videos. Um, I'd watch a, a channel called Whatever, where they would just do random, like, strange pranks. Like, one time, the guy, like, dressed up as Goku and, like, started shouting, ah! Like, they're even yelling louder than I am, just because I feel it's weird, um, in this video. Um, and they just, like, go into, like, a McDonald's, stand on the counter, and start yelling, like, Goku. And they're all dressed up like Goku, so it kind of makes it, um, make more sense and make people get it. But, uh, but yeah, they would, they would just do that and it's just to show that one other people's opinions don't matter that that thing in your brain that social anxiety and whatever and society that says hey you know you have to be normal like all that stuff is just subjective and it doesn't matter and they're there to just overcome it right uh and i would, I would watch that and just be like hey you know what it doesn't matter right it would just kind of psych me out like it really doesn't matter the the results like I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be caring about the other people's opinions, and so I'll, I'll just watch them to psych myself up. I'd also watch like actual like pickup artists and action. I'll just watch them like how they approach women, how they approach people, what do they say, all this stuff, just to get a feel for it, and uh, yeah, just to kind of help me overcome you know any social anxiety I might have. And so I watch prank videos, I watch pickup videos. Uh, I really like this guy named uh, Stuart Edge. He does uh, some prank videos. He does like these weird like hybrids between like prank and pickup videos. It's just, like they're basically pranks, but uh, they could easily be pickup videos. Um, so and what I liked about him, and I'm gonna I'll bring him up later again. Is I really liked his uh, his body language in the videos. He was very calm, very conscientious, and uh, that comes from that comes to my next tip. So. Uh, I'll go ahead and list all the tips at the end of the video again. But So the fourth tip is come from a confident place. When you project confidence, people can feel that, right? When you're looking at them directly, calmly, asking them a question, hey, how's it going, sitting there, waiting for a reply, then replying once they've said it, like not rushing your speech, people can notice this, right? If you're just like rushing when you talk, like moving all around, like you don't feel comfortable, you're like really stiff, like sitting like this, like you don't want to move because you're a little nervous, you just sit like this, right? People notice the rigidness, the fact that it's unnatural. It becomes like awkward and it makes the situation awkward. So when you do things that uh, are strange, it just makes the situation more awkward, um, which is not what you're going for. So if you come at it like a confident 
from a confident place, from a place of comfort, right? All of these other things just fall into place. You no longer have to like consciously be worrying about like, well, how are my hands placed? How is this place? Like, you could look at any of the salespeople or any other pickup artist, and if you ask them like, do you ever worry about like, you know, the position of your hands or whatever? If they've been doing it for a number of years, I can assure you they they don't. Like maybe they did like initially just kind of like thought about it, and that might be where you're at or where I'm at. It's like initially you want to make sure you're coming off calm, but once you start feeling comfortable, it just all comes naturally. You don't have to worry about it. Um, so how do you uh, gain this this comfort so that way uh, that way things come off naturally? Well, one way is uh, you know I got this from Elliot Hulse. Um, I watched a lot of videos, see a lot of like self help videos, a lot of like different videos, and I kind of pieced their information together to make like this comprehensive video. And I'll maybe I'll link to these uh, channels in the description. But um, <clears throat> watched a lot of Elliot Hulse, and he talked about saying like morning mantras, right? Kind of like monks do. And the reason you want to say like a morning mantra is because you want to psychologically like prep yourself to be in a certain state of mind. Um, before going out like you don't want any like wavering or any weakness or any like confusion or wishy watchness it's like just prepping yourself psychologically like a Olympic sprinter would do like before they go for a run or like uh, someone about to jump in like cold water like what how they'll psychologically prep themselves for the task like set their mind to do it and have nothing else um, this can just really help brace for any unexpected things that happen because you just prep yourself psychologically. Um, so here's an example. You can say a morning mantra. Let's say you say this. You literally look in the mirror. You get into it. You say this to yourself like, you know, 10, 15 times. You say, you look into the mirror. You're like, I'm a confident person. I'm a strong person. And I'm great at casual conversations. I'm a confident person. I'm a strong person. And I'm great at casual conversations. Um, and you just repeat this, you know, I'm a confident person, I'm a strong person, and I'm great at casual conversations. And you repeat this like 10, 20 times right before you go out just to prep yourself mentally, right? And and trust me, it can help because social anxiety is innate to us. It's nothing you're ever going to get fully rid of just because it's in your brain just to happen. So prepping yourself could be a great way to deal with it, even when you're a master at this and done it for 10, 12 years, and it's super easy once you get into it. The thing is, it's just once you get into it. So you just need to get yourself into the flow, and then everything works out. Uh, another thing is, living healthy is another great way to boost your self-esteem, boost your self-confidence, and also a lot of studies show that it helps you think more clearly. Like, you know, the best chess players in the world work out. They run, they do push-ups and sit-ups. You know, Magnus Carlsen, who's the number one chess player right now, um, you know, he's also a model. Um, he seems to live like a bit of more of a social life than maybe past uh, chess masters have, you know, seemingly going to, like, parties and doing other things in addition to, like, studying chess rigorously. But the thing is, like, working out and walking and stuff lowers your stress levels, releases positive uh, endorphins in the brain, giving yourself more positivity. And uh, and because of that, it just helps you, um, it helps you project yourself, helps you think more clearly, and helps you feel better about yourself. And when you feel more confident, you project confidence, right? And that projecting confidence will, will, make, will make the social situation seem normal. Regardless whether it is normal or not, if you project that it's normal, it will become normal, right? If you project, hey, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it, they expect that it's normal, um, right? You can determine what's normal in that little circle that you've just entered. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, and uh, another thing is about feeling confident and comfortable is go out and do social things. You know, go to movies, um, you know, go to some sporting games, uh, Join a bowling league, um, join a book club, you know, go to the library and read there, go to a coffee shop and work there. Um, you know, and, and even if you're not doing the social thing, just be in the social environment. Go to a mall and, uh, you know, draw your comic books, pictures if you're into drawing comic books. Like, go somewhere social and active um, and, do the, uh, and, and do stuff to uh, 
just get used to the environment and also in particular it's even better if you're actually doing something social as well you know you know join a church group join whatever just do something social for yourself um, go out with your friends um, somewhere right in, into like a social place not just like in their house like playing video games every day right change it up uh, so and this is going to help you it's going to give you more practice with you know the lingo of the day the fads the fashion how people talk, how people act, right? You're just going to get used to all that stuff, and you're just going to acquire it through osmosis, just like indirectly you'll acquire it, right? You'll just get to know about, you know, the pop stars, the new video games, the new movies people are raving about, the new fashion, you know, the new phrases. Uh, like, I'm a substitute teacher, and, you know, and I really like that because I get to know about all the new fads. Like, I get to know, like, like the phrase, get wrecked, which I start hearing now, actually, but I heard it, like five, six months ago when it was like just in the community of like the younger audience, right? Just in like the middle schools and high schools. And now I'm hearing it and now I can just literally, I can just overhear the phrase and I just find it funny just because, I mean, I just, you know, I know it's just like the new phrase, you know, like just like back in my day, but like it's off the hook or off the chain, like, right? Uh, we, we all have our own phrases. Um, so just getting used to those things. So just doing social things. One, it gives you more stuff to talk about. So if you talk to random people, you just have more experiences to draw from. And uh, those conversations will just go smoother, right? So you'll just have, it'll, you will be less likely to get stuck in conversation because you can just draw from all these experiences you've been doing. And also it's going to help you with your body language and talking. And even if you don't know it, it's still a trial and error of how to uh, communicate effectively when you're talking to uh, people in those groups. Another great thing is I would say, hey, join jiu-jitsu. It could, uh, you know, or martial arts, you know, like uh, taekwondo, um, karate, whatever. You know, I really like jiu-jitsu. Personally, it's kind of like my new thing. I've been watching a lot of videos on it, and uh, I'm a big MMA fan, so it's natural that I like that. But, you know, jiu-jitsu, I mean, even to talk about how it's going to build your confidence, right? If you're beating people in jiu-jitsu and slowly getting better you're just going to naturally feel like a badass, even though you're just still like a uh, white belt, right? You're just going to feel like a badass. And that and that confidence level is just going to get projected out in your body language, right? So I don't want to go into like the evolutionary side of that, how like girls are going to be intrinsically attracted to confident body language, right? It's going to it's going to project the status of alpha maleness, of being a good provider and a good project, uh, protector if your body language is open, right? Like here, I'm moving my arms a lot, right? So I'm expressing like, this is all my territory and I'm very comfortable doing this and I don't care if I'm noticed, right? So these are all, uh, you know, quote unquote alpha male things. And I don't even think, uh, to me, alpha maleness has never been an important thing. It's just, um, it's a natural part of just becoming yourself. When you try to, like, you know, as Elliot Hulse might say, you know, become the strongest version of yourself, whatever. When you, when you try just to express yourself and grow yourself in different situations, everything just falls into place. And who cares where you are on the totem pole? Your natural place is where you're going to want to be, right? Like, try, like trying to, like, just elevate yourself just for the sake of elevating yourself to me uh, is not very meaningful because it, it, it just won't last. It'll be like an act. It won't it won't last for you. So you do not have to be the leader of a group. Um, there have been plenty of groups where I've been the leader of and there's been plenty of groups where I've been not, you know. So it all depends on the situation you're in. And um, I think as long as you're respected, then uh, then you're fine. Don't worry about anything else. So yeah, so do something like jujitsu. It'll give you like a social interaction. It'll build up your physical health. It'll uh, make you more confident, whatever. And uh, it lowers your stress levels, helps you think clearly. All this, all these are really good things. Um, so another thing is, this is all trying to build your confidence, to come from a confident place. The other thing is, uh, be conscious of your body language. I know I told you earlier that like once you kind of develop yourself, you won't need to consciously think of your body language, but initially you might, like you might have strange habits, like you might like, you know, pull on your ear or like maybe pick your nose or 
Maybe you, uh, you know, have poor hygiene or maybe, uh, you know, whatever it is. Just initially just be conscientious of it so you can project the image and message you want to project, right? So if you have, like, a weird habit of just, like, constantly looking up while you talk, right, that just means something in our language. It means you're not focused on them, that you have interests elsewhere. Even if you actually are not think let's say you're just, that's just how you think, and you're just, like, sitting there like that, and that's how you talk. Um, but in our society, it means something. So projecting what you want to project is... Um, very uh very very important so all right so that's number four number five uh if you're still having trouble just approaching people and whatever and, and you might um make the decision to act before acting this is tip number five make the decision to act before acting this means that you might say hey you know i have trouble talking to strangers so you make the decision in your head, the next person I see, I'm going to go up to them and I'm going to ask them where the nearest gas station is. Okay? Whatever the question might be. You're going to go up and ask a question. And you already made the decision before acting. And definitely, I'd refer you back to number one is make baby steps first. Is build up to this point and then do this. Right? Because you always want to push yourself. If you know, if you're feeling too comfortable... You need to push yourself to the next level, and it may suck, it may feel weird, it may come off clumsy, you may get rejected, people might think you're a weirdo, that's going to happen, but you're looking for long-term success right here. You're not looking for any individual person to like and love you and like, oh my God, be your friend forever, right? You're not looking for that. You're just looking for personal growth and to develop a skill set that can serve you for the rest of your life. Um, whether you get into sales, whether you're just dealing with people, dealing with drama, uh, whatever it is, it can be a, a mentality and an attitude you can develop that will just help you think clearly about situations and deal with them, okay? Whether you're already in a relationship and you have trouble with your wife or girlfriend or your best friend and you want to know how to deal with it, developing these skills, these uh, social skills and building the confidence associated with them can really help you communicate in an effective way. So I don't view this as like a, a pickup artist uh, video or a uh, how to make friends at school video. I, I view it as a video designed to deal with lots of social anxiety issues, um, especially approach anxiety, but also a way to develop an attitude to uh, approach people from a calm perspective and one where you're thinking clearly. Okay, so another tip to deal with uh, this approach anxiety is, yeah, just make the decision before you act. So yeah, so it's wherever the next person is, you say, hey, the next person I'm going to say hi to. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're a five-year-old kid. I don't care if they're the hottest person on earth. I don't care if they're Britney Spears. I don't care if they're Michael Jordan. Uh, you know, I don't care if it's Muhammad Ali. I don't care if it's Mike Tyson. I, whoever it is, I don't care. I'm going to say hi to. Right? If that becomes too easy, you can be like, all right, I'm going to say hi to the next hot girl I see. Right? You say, I'm going to say hello. Right? If you just have trouble talking to them. Um, and the next time you're like, hey, you know what, I'm going to go up and ask a, a question to the next hot girl I see. Or, or whatever it is that you are personally struggling with, right? Or, like, let's say you feel like you can't talk in class. You're a student, you're in school, and you just don't feel like you have many, many friends, you don't really talk to anyone, and you just, next day, you decide, hey, you know what, I'm going to talk to this person. I don't really care how they react. I don't care what they say. I don't care if they make fun of me. It, just, it totally doesn't matter. I'm just going to talk to them. I'm like, hey, how's it going? They're going to say, whatever. Hey, I was just wondering, did you see the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie? Just whatever they say. Yes, no, you know, whatever. And you say, that's what I'm going to ask them. And the funny thing is, even if you're faking the conversation, fake conversations can turn into real conversations. That's the beauty of it. You instigate it. You start it with whatever. And eventually you can turn into a real conversation, right? A very shallow friendship, right, can turn into a real friendship, you know, over time. So you talk to them enough, they can turn into a real friendship. And that's one thing I will say is, like, if you feel like you don't have any friends and you're in school or whatever, is go and uh, go and talk to, uh, you know, other people that you think don't have any friends. Like, don't make fun of them put them down and, like, try to make yourself look cool in front of the cool kids or the popular kids you're trying to get in with. 
you'll have a lot more success and a lot more respect if, uh, one, you respect yourself, and two, you just go and talk to other people in the same situation as yourself. Okay? Make friends with them, and then you won't even need those friends. You'll have plenty of fun. You can talk about, you know, very similar interests you guys might have. Maybe you both like chess. Maybe you both like manga. You both read Naruto. Uh, you know, or let's say you want to talk to some popular kid, you know, and you know he reads Naruto, whatever. Just literally talk to him. Like, hey, you, read, you see the latest thing of Naruto. Just decide to yourself that you're going to ask him that question. Right? So make the decision before even it comes up. So there is no more decision making. It's already been made. You're just in go mode. You're going to do it. Right? And you can rehearse the question if you have to. Say it in a mirror a bunch of times to make it autopilot. But make the decision before acting. Okay? That's tip number five. Tip number six. Have no expectations. Okay? If you're worried about the outcome, like if you want this girl to say yes or you want this person to be your friend, you're going to come off afraid. You're going to come off uh, insecure. And that's going to give them all the power. It's going to tell them, hey, it doesn't matter how they behave with you because you're strange and weird and, uh, you know, it is, you know, they, they get to determine when the conversation starts and when the conversation ends. And they don't really care about your opinion because you're just a weird person, right? So, um, at least this, this is just how it comes off. So, uh, so what it's important to do is don't come off insecure and awkward or whatever. And one way to do this is just don't have any expectations. Just don't care. When you don't care, right, or pretend you don't care, tell yourself you don't care. Pretend, pretend yourself it's just a game. Oh, I'm just having fun. I'm just going to say this random stuff and just see what they do, right, just to be goofy, Right? then it doesn't matter how they reply. If they react positively, great. If they react negatively, who cares? Just talk to someone else, right? So uh, it takes away their power. If you come off like you're always agreeing with them, you're trying to make them laugh, and you know, you're all nervous and awkward about the situation, it gives them control of the situation. It basically says whatever they say goes. Right, and they're gonna notice this. It's just in our innate biology is to notice that this is happening, right? And when they feel that they can have your friendship or lose your friendship whenever they want, they're not really gonna care for it, right? They're, there's gonna be like no desire. It's like if you have a fridge with a billion uh, bottles of Gatorade, right? There's no desire for you to, like, always just drink Gatorade, right? You'll drink Gatorade that first week a lot because maybe you just got it and you have a lot. But, like, if it's just always there, there's no desire for it. There's just no caring. And the same thing with a person. If a person is just always there and you know that they're going to be your friends regardless, that there's no expectation, no, no criteria on their part, then you're not going to really care to be their friend because you have all the power. You can be their friend when you want to or not when you don't want to. And the same thing is just happens in a random conversation is if you don't show that you have some self-respect and that you're going to like talk and say your opinion and whatever and set the tone, then they're just not going to care if you're coming off just like all weird and like just letting them like just showing that you just want to just try to please them. There's It's just not going to be um, interesting and they're just not going to care because it's just, they can have it whenever they want, so it doesn't become pressing. But when you show yourself to be like a funny or interesting person with depth, right, they're going to care because they don't want to potentially lose this friendship. They don't potentially want to look bad to you, right, because you've come off as a cool person, you know, that's just talking. Like, they don't want to look bad now. So, so now you've reversed the roles, right? You've set the tone. You've decided, hey, this is normal. This is how we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about this. And now they don't want to look dumb to you because you've projected that confidence. So you literally can flip the entire rules of the situation just by your body language. Um, so that's just important of like being confident when you do it. Um, yeah, so just make decisions to act before acting and have no expectation. Another way to like a way to help yourself have no expectations is you can pretend it's a game. Right? You can pretend, hey, uh, I'm not even really talking to people. This is just me just seeing uh, what goofy reactions do I uh, do I get when I say, walk up to people, do you think I look like a turtle? Right? And do like a weird face. Like, I give them like a weird, um, when I was a kid, I used to call it the turtle smile. 
like I'm smiling like a turtle. That's because I really love the Ninja Turtle movies, the original live action ones. So I'll be like, <laughs> all the time. Anyway, that was my turtle smile for pictures. Um, so, so yeah, just uh, make it a game. Have no expectations. Um, another thing to help you with uh, making the game is you can use a script, right? You can have a pre-planned question, right? Uh, I'm going to ask them this, right? And try to make it a vague question. That way the potential of the conversation can go somewhere. Don't ask them somewhere specific. Like, you know, what do you think of uh, Voltaire's dialogue on on uh, on, on bunnies uh, wearing spectacles? Do you really think their nose was designed to uh, hold a pair of glasses or... Was it uh, coincidence? Thoughts, um, right? <laughs> so those who know who Voltaire was, he was a famous, witty writer that had these like clever and quirky things um, that talked kind of about evolution and stuff. Not important though. Um, what what is important is just you know ask them a general question. You know something that you would think they would know. Um, like, yeah, I, I don't know, like, you know, ask them, like, hey, you know, do you go to X college, or, that's even too specific, you know, just ask them, you know, like, um, you know, are there any good restaurants downtown, you know, something like that, like, yeah, I'm thinking about going to a new place with my friends, I just wonder if you can recommend, like, a cool new restaurant, let's have a conversation, and they might start talking about it, they'll talk about why they like it, you're like, oh, cool, and then you can go off some side thing and, like, you know, about, you know, whatever, how, you know, you had this, like, oh, they have really good burgers, oh, cool, because I had this burger at, you know, uh, wherever you had your burger at, and you're like, yeah, this is so, like, burnt and bushy, I don't know, have you eaten there, and, like, 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 oh, yeah, I have the same experience, blah, blah, I'm like, yeah, it's so gross, we just want to puke, you know, uh, and just... Yeah, then you can just ask another question or whatever. Just move on. And be like, hey, have a great day. Um, so, yes, use a script. Pretend it's a game. Um, you can have an opener. You can have some side stories pre-planned to throw in if you want. Um, you know, about how you were waiting in line last time you were at said restaurant, right? So, let's say you ask about the restaurant. You can talk about how you're now waiting in line at, that, at a restaurant. And literally from that opener, you can go wherever you want in the conversation, you know? And, yeah, uh, you know, it's just a great way to transition into a totally different conversation, you know? And, you know, and then, like, just midway through the conversation, like, you can notice their shoes or something they're wearing, you know, something like that. Like, hey, did you get that from blah, blah, JCPenney, whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, it looks, looks really cute. Like, oh, my gosh, thank you. Um, right? So, you can just do that, right? Just Yeah. So, I have no expectations. Number seven, be in the moment. Uh, what this means is, after you've had some practice, you've done your baby steps, you socially saturate yourself, you watch people in action with the YouTube videos, you know, you watch the Goku video, people doing kind of crazy stuff. You've uh, said your mantras, you've talked to your brother and sister, and you've tried to get them to do wacky and crazy stuff you normally wouldn't do. You know, you tried to flirt with a coworker just for the hell of it to see if you can make her laugh. Um, you know, you just do these things to kind of develop your your uh, your skill set. Um, you ask for girls' numbers that you don't really care to get, just just to practice. You know, um, you've just stuff you've done to develop, you know, using these kind of skills and ideologies. Um, another thing you want to develop is, you know, after you've kind of, you know, developed the body language you want, looking people in the eye, sitting there, um, waiting for a reply, is to just be in the moment of the conversation. Be where you are. They are dealing with you, right? They're talking to you. You're looking at them like, hey, this person is talking to me. I'm talking to them. What am I going to say? You know, this is what I'm going to project. And this is almost like the opposite. This is like another level of, you know, pretending it's a game. It's like you kind of still have a sense that it's a game because it doesn't really matter the outcome of this conversation. But now you're making the game about you. You're no longer making the game about a character, right, or a script. Like I have lines, pre planned lines. I'm going to say this, 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 and this. Then I'm going to ask for their number, right? And some people literally do that, and it can work, right? 
But another thing, another thing you can do is, uh, you know, or I'm going to say this, this, and this, and make them slap, and make them like me, and then we're going to play basketball together, and we're going to have fun. I'll make them new friends. But another thing you can do is just what I call just be in the moment, right? So I think what really helps when, for you to be in the moment, though, is when you come from a confident place, is when you dial your confidence, you know, up, and you can, uh, and you can lower your social anxiety feelings, right? So putting your confidence up and lowering your social anxiety. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm gonna tell you one thing. Like one time, like you know, I went into different social situations where I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna be a super confident me. I'm just gonna turn it way up and just be super confident. I'm gonna approach random people. I don't really care whatever, I'm going to make them laugh, you know, and I did, I had a great time, I got a bunch of girls' numbers, I, you know, I had fun, I talked to people, you know, I was just, I literally was being me, but I was just being a super dialed up, confident version of me that I didn't care, and I have generally a natural wit and whatever to myself that I feel like I can kind of navigate in social situations if I need to, um, but yeah, this is what I did, I came in with that attitude, and here I think, this is almost like a better version of that. And that's just, you don't have to necessarily dial it crazy high up, right? You definitely want to have high confidence and you want to have low social anxiety. But you want to be in the moment. What that means is you want to be like, listen, they are dealing with me. They are talking to me. I'm talking to them. And you're going to ask them a question. And just like you would with your brother or sister or someone you've talked to a billion times, you're going to ask them a question. You're going to wait for a response. You're not going to rush it. I'm like, oh, my God, what about this? Right? You're just going to ask them a question, wait for a response, make a genuine comment that you would about that, what they just said, and have a conversation about that. Right? And just go back and forth and just genuinely be listening. Right? Don't be going just to, just to your script or to your whatever, but genuinely be listening. If you run out of things to talk about and you want to bring up a story you've brought up a million times, um, yeah, just uh, sure, go for it. Bring up your little side script, your little side story that you want to bring up, especially if it makes you feel comfortable, if you feel like the conversation is getting dry and you kind of just want to talk about something. And if you have a pre friend script you used before, you know, sure, um, go ahead and do it. But make it 90% you. You know, and 10% of stuff that, you know, you pre-plan, like, just in case, you know, things are boring. You know, pre-plan things to talk about. Or stuff you've talked about a million times. Like a comedian, right? He goes up on the mic. He might be doing, like, uh, or if you watch Whose Lines Anyway, they do, like, a bunch of improv. But a lot of times they borrow from their own past improv or from each other's past improvs. Just because it's natural and it's just the first thing that came to mind. So they're just trying to think up whatever they can. But, um... And they're, and you can definitely feel their style and their feel that it's them, that it's their improv, their spin on an improv. But sometimes they'll just borrow from, the, borrow from themselves, right? Borrow something in the past it did. Or people that, like, freestyle rap. A lot of times they're going to borrow the same rap or rhythm or beats of stuff that they've already rapped. It's not, like, all new and spontaneous and 100% original and there's no commonality. Sometimes they're going to have exact lines of past rap songs, I said, in their new rap song. Similarly, when you're talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, you might even have a similar portion of a conversation, you know, like, you always go back to, you know, uh, you know, have you, uh, you know, have you been to this juice bar down there? It's like a really healthy juice bar, you know, have you been there? And they're like, oh, no, yeah, it's like, oh, you should really try it out, you want to come with me, I'm about to go, right? That might even be a scripted line that you have, right? Um, so... You know, or you can be like, hey, I don't know where it's at. You know, I'm looking for these healthy juice bars. You know, can you show me? You know, and they'll probably be like, yeah, like, all right, sweet. Like, all right, let's go. Um, you know, and uh, you might have some scripted parts, but be in the moment. Don't be 100% scripts. You're still going to have successes just with 100% scripts, but you'll enjoy it a lot more, and you'll have a lot higher success rate if you're just in the moment responding, right? There'll be depth to your character. If you just go on a script, there's going to be no depth. It just means if the character works that you created, the script you work created, that means, yes, you're going to make that friend. Or, yes, you're going to get that girl's number. 
but if the script you made is not working, it doesn't change. It's just you keep on this character's role, whatever, whatever it may be, and boom, there's you're going to potentially lose a person, right, that you wanted to get their number of, or you may have wanted to get your friends of. But um, if you're just yourself, right, yourself is super complicated. Sometimes you contradict yourself, like one year you think this, the next year you've learned more, you think something else, and the two are in contradiction, or you contradict yourself within the same day, like you've changed your mind, or just you have different values and you're, you know, how you weigh them, right? So there is no, like, streamlined character, right? There's a very complicated character there. It has depth, and it, and it can adapt and change to the situation you're in. So being in the moment, listening and replying and having a natural conversation um, will afford you a lot higher success rate. Um, okay, that's tip number seven. Uh, oh, great examples of this are Stuart Edge. Like, watch his uh, picking, it, sweeping girls off their feet, um, greeting people with kisses. Just watch how he has really good body language and how he's in the moment. He listens to what they say, and then he replies. He's very natural and calm about it. Versus uh, the L.A. H F guy Loff whatever he is the opposite he's doing the character right he picks a character so look at this sweeping girls off the street and watch the two people one guy does a uh, a character his name's like Loff or whatever and he picks an attitude and a character and just goes with it he's just like this funny quirky guy and he doesn't care what the reaction is he has his character preset he's just gonna go with it and for some people that's gonna go great He's going to get a lot of laughs and numbers and lots of success and whatever else he wants. And for other people, um, it's just going to come off awkward and strange and it's like, get away from me, right? But watch Stuart, who's doing the same thing, right? But he's just trying to be in the moment. He's just reacting to the reaction. If he, if they're acting like this is weird, he brings it up just like a normal person would. Like he says, like, like oh, you're being creeped out by me. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> with the kiss too much, and like, oh my gosh, way too much. It's like, okay, let's just try it on the mouth one more time, right? And he'll turn it into a joke. So he'll turn, he'll acknowledge the creepy situation, and then turn it into something humorous to make light of it, right? To deal with it. He doesn't just let, like, the creepiness happen, and then just keep the creepiness to continue happening, you know, by uh, still being more weird about it. So being in the moment, I think, is also... Uh, really important. It doesn't mean you can't use any script or techniques or tactics or whatever, you know, like, like I've watched Justin Wayne dating, which I really feel he's more of like the scripted type and it's not really my style or my preference, right? I, I feel that narrows your window, uh, your window, but he has some strengths and he uses some tactics, like he'll ask girls for high fives or he'll push them or whatever. I think people do this already naturally. Like, I don't think it's anything, but he consciously does it, right? He consciously does it. And there are techniques to get certain reactions that he wants, right? To say, hey, touching is okay and blah, blah, and makes them feel more comfortable. He, like, intentionally does things to make them feel more comfortable. And I think being in the moment, being yourself, projecting confidence um, are essentially all the tools you need, but you can even further your success rate by just using, just like if you would, like, sales door-to-door, -door, right? Like, they might be certain wordings, right? You can word things in a positive way, or you can word things in a negative way. Like, you can make your product look positively by wording it one way, or you can make it look negatively. So you talk about the pros of your con uh, product or the negatives of not having your product, right? So... Instead of attacking what people currently have, like, hey, let's just say on the cell computer, like, hey, your old computer sucks. It's it's slow. It uses floppy disk. It's really just a piece of junk. Terrible purchase. Whoever bought it was an idiot, right? <laughs> like, even if you don't say whoever bought it was an idiot, you're almost suggesting that, right? It's just a really terrible purchase. Bad, bad mistake, right? So they're already on the defensive, right? Even though it does make your product all the more better because how crappy their product is, but it's how you're spinning it. You're focused on how bad their product is, leading to them to the logical conclusion of how good your product is. But it makes them feel bad emotionally about their product. So it's much better to say the exact same message, but instead of how they've made a mistake buying that bad computer, you just talk about, hey, if you buy this computer, it's going to last you 10 years, has a three-year warranty, um, it can play... Uh, 
any of the games that you want up to this point. It's very fast with the internet. Um, it has a webcam and a microphone built in. Um, it has Wi-Fi. It's light and portable. It has a five-hour battery life. And um, and yeah, and it's guaranteed to three years to work. Um, it's a reputable brand, whatever. Whatever, uh, you know, whatever selling point you want, it's much better to talk about this thing positively than to bash um, uh, their thing uh, negatively. So, so yeah, um, just be yourself, be in the moment, but it's okay to use some, like, you know, knowledge of sales and how to communicate certain messages. You know, just 90% just say whatever you're going to say, be in the moment, react. But, you know, if you've learned that, okay, people take this the wrong way, if you bash what they have and it's better to speak positively, then, yeah, go for that, you know. Or let's say people become more comfortable with you quicker if you shake their hand first. There's no problem. Shake their hand first. Like, hey, nice to meet you. Shake their hand, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's okay to uh, implement, you know, what you might call tips and tricks of the trade just to make people more comfortable. Um I'd recommend doing it. It seems pretty rational to me. I don't find it to be immoral or anything like that. And as long as it's not contradicting to your personal values, right, then it's not misleading, it's not deceptive, uh, then, yeah, there's there's just no problem doing it. If people connect better when you look them in the eye, then look them in the eye, right? You're just about sending a message, right? And this is what being conscious of your body language is being about, is the fact that there are ways to send messages that you might not know, right? Maybe if I did my hair a little bit better, I might get more you, uh, views on this uh, YouTube video, right? And uh, people will take me a little more seriously. Or if I have a, you know, whatever, if I shave my beard or whatever, you know, who knows? I think it matches my shirt quite nicely. Um, but, yeah, that's not the point. The point is, just be conscientious of it. And... So the last thing was, and it's kind of the thing is, uh, also uh, Simple Pickup has a guy too. So Stuart Edge is really good at that, and Simple Pickup, there's like like an Indian guy, like an Asian guy, and like this white guy, and the Indian guy and the Asian guy, they're much more likely to be using scripts, right, to go 100% script, but the white guy is much more likely to be in the moment. He listens and replies, takes his time, doesn't even mind pausing a second to reply. Like, if you notice, his replies are much slower than the Asian guy and the Indian guy's replies. And that's because he is, uh, you know, he's thinking about what they said and then replying. And yes, I'm sure he's used some script elements, he's used some past stories again, you know, or past compliments or past jokes or whatever. Or openers that he's comfortable with, right? He's going to reuse them, right? They worked a million times, great. You know, he just reuses them. <clears throat> and or a certain style of humor that fits him, and he just uses that, right? So that's fine. But that's what I'm talking about is, like, there can be some script elements in it, some qualities that, you know, work and express what you want and get, achieve what you want effectively. But be in the moment, listen and reply, okay? So 90%, you should try to be yourself and secondarily use the script, right? When you're just starting, you can use a script 100% and just whatever, but as you get more comfortable, be in the moment, and then secondarily use the script, and that'll up your success rate a lot. So, and just remember, it's okay to be rejected. You're not gonna make friends with everyone. You're not gonna sell that book to every single person you meet, and you're not gonna pick up every girl you're trying to get the number of. And maybe you don't want that girl's number, right? Maybe you wouldn't have been compatible, Maybe she's, you know, mean-spirited, maybe whatever, right? So just remember, even though you're going into the conversation with some interest, it doesn't mean that you even want to follow up on it, right? It's a feeling out process both ways, right? You're trying to to express yourself in a, uh, in a clear way, um, your goals. And even if you succeed in getting the number, it doesn't mean that you are actually going to call that person. That, they, that person might not be for you. So, <sighs> and I will say last thing before I go, this is not an hour yet, so I got six minutes, um, is when you are in the moment, when you're being yourself, when you're showing that depth to your character, 
you're going to have a lot better chance making friendships um, in sales and picking up girls or, or guys if you're a girl um, that you actually care about when you're being in the moments, right? You're going to get to know them. You're going to feel them out. You're going to adapt, and you're really going to get to see a lot more of the character. If you are totally in a script mode, you're, they're going to see one aspect of your character, which is the script, and you're going to see very limited aspects of their character, right? Which is they're just laughing to your jokes and whatever. Oh my gosh, you're so funny, right? Um, so because of that, um, it makes a lot more sense, especially if you're trying to find someone you'll enjoy uh, and someone that's not, that doesn't just say yes to everybody, right? Um, let's say you're talking about like mates or whatever. You're not trying to find a mate that's just going to say yes to anybody. You want someone that has some sort of filter and some sort of criteria, right? So they don't have diseases and they are respectable and have standards and that, you know, they're going to be somewhat sane and reasonable um, and emotionally stable, right? People that are emotionally unstable or, you know, people that live a wild lifestyle, you know, are often going to be the ones that are easier to say yes, the ones that your initial little script thing is going to work on. But if you're in the moment and react to their body language, they're laughing, if they didn't like a certain thing, you know, you can address that, you know, or change topics or whatever, or just ask why they didn't like it, you know, like, oh, it's probably not that bad. I mean, it's just, you know, just because, you know, Japanese people like to eat, you know, uh, you know, squid that's alive. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I get it's gross from our perspective, but, I mean, it's a cultural thing. Like, we won't eat, you know, we'll eat pigs, we don't eat dogs. You know, I mean, totally a double standard. And I'm like, yeah, I guess you're right. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, uh, and then, you know, I, you know, then, of course, then you could use, like, a tactic here, right? You could, like, make a joke out of it, right, to make them laugh, because, you know, laughing will just increase that connection. You know, so, um, yeah, it's like, it's like just because we're killing uh, Wilbur, you know, and they're killing uh, Lassie, you know, doesn't make us so much better than them. And then they'll be like, you know, like, oh, whatever, haha. Um, hopefully they've seen Charlotte's Web, and if they haven't, it's, you know, atrocious. Um, but anyway, so at the very end, um, well, I encourage you to just to try these steps and to um, practice them. And I'm, maybe I'll make another video that's a lot shorter. Maybe I'll try to make like a 10-minute version of this where I like run through everything really quickly. Um, and maybe I'll even add to it um, later on. But your end goal is to be in the moment, be yourself, and only use like the tips and tricks, like the body language, the script, the tactics, whatever, as ways to further your expression and accent it to me, you know, to emphasize it. They're not, they're not there to replace what you, uh, who you want to be or what you want to say or to lie to them, right? Um, they're there just to help you achieve uh, your goal in uh, a non-deceptive manner, so right hopefully that all made sense and i uh hope people get something out of this uh video i'm going to link a couple of channels like stewart edges uh whatever whatever's elliot holtz and, and a lot of people that are going to help you uh develop a positive attitude and you know thinking about yourself in a positive way in a loving way um will really help boost your your confidence and help you uh achieve whatever you're trying to achieve in life i don't view these as skills just for these social situations. I think being confident, clear-headed in the moment is uh, something you can use in all stages of your life, and it's gonna, and it's a skill you're gonna have to constantly develop, and it'll serve you really well. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I hope it was helpful. Have a great day.